Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you right now for even the, the words that we're going to be learning on tonight, the studying and teaching on today, that we get more understanding, more of your wisdom, more revelation, oh God, to begin to divide the word, oh God, begin to understand and apply the word, oh God. Father, we thank you right now that you has given the believers, oh God, hallelujah, even the the born again children of God, power and authority here on earth, oh God. You said that you had given us the authority to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all of the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt us, oh God. I thank you, oh God, Lord, that even now that you are not only uh, came to save us, oh God, but you also came to give us power and authority, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, oh God, that you have died for us, oh God, in order for us to have freedom, that, that you desire is that we will live a life abundance in every area of our lives, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And I declare today, tonight, based on your word, oh God, as a believers, that we are we have the authority and the power over the devil, oh God. I thank you, oh God, and I can declare that the devil is subject to us as believers and that we that we that he hallelujah must uh, uh, must bow down must obey uh, uh your word oh god when when we when we speak oh god hallelujah your word hallelujah in the mighty name of jesus i declare right now that the devil is subject to the words of the believers speaking when they lined up with your word oh god in the name of jesus oh god and i declare right now based on your word that the devil is subject to the believers rights and and we cannot take them away from that can they cannot take that away from us oh god in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah god i thank you god that we can declare to the lord that you are a god that we will praise you and we will exalt your name on high oh god 
in the name of Jesus, oh God, I thank you that we are, hallelujah, that you are the enemy of the feet of God, oh God, and he is under our feet, oh God. I thank you, oh God, that you have rise, rise up these warriors, oh God, in this season, oh God, these intercessors, oh God, you are bringing them forth in the mighty name of Jesus to come together as well as unifying us, oh God, on one accord in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. I pray, Father, even now, Father, hallelujah that you will we will rise up together oh god and you will make us sit with you in that heavenly places oh god far above the darkness and the principalities of the world oh god it said far above oh god all rulers uh rule rule and authority and power and dominion and every uh name that is named not only that in this age but also the one to come you lord have made us more than overcomers oh god hallelujah yes we overcome we can overcome oh god uh the uh overcome by the blood of the lamb oh god and the word of our testimonies oh god and they are they will love not their lives to the death oh god hallelujah oh god thank you lord hallelujah for loving us oh god for all your kindness towards those that love you oh god in the mighty name of jesus oh god we bless your name oh god we give you the glory we give you the honor that is due unto you oh god we pray father even now that you will show up and show out in this teaching in this class and on tonight oh god that chains are being broken oh god hallelujah walls are being broken now uh, hallelujah been breaking broken down in the mighty name of jesus oh god and we put everything under the submission of the blood of Jesus, oh God, as we yield these vessels into the Holy Spirit, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, right now, Father, freedom, hallelujah, and deliverance is taking place, oh God. Healing, miraculous power by, hallelujah, Lord, is, is in this place, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you in Jesus' name. And I declare and decree that everything is must mind up with the word and the will of God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, good evening, good evening, everyone. Praise God, praise God, hallelujah, for your showing up tonight, amen, amen. Taking time out of your schedule to get on board, get on board, and we thank God for you, amen. So we're gonna go ahead and get started, and we're gonna talk about last week, lesson in chapter two, Remember, it's not too late to get you guys to get your books. We ordered, some have ordered theirs through Kindle and Born Nobles, and I got mine through uh, Amazon. And the book is called Over, Overcoming Familiar Spirits by Dr. Bridges. And I'm telling you, this is a good book to have in your library. Amen. It's a good tool to add to your tool belt. Amen. And so uh, definitely try to go ahead. It's not too late. We got 11 more weeks to go before we complete this book. So get get on in, dive on in, get in where you can fit in. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't worry about if you, you know, the class is too late for uh, behind and everything. Listen, God know exactly where you need it to be. Amen. And the time frame and the, the perfect word that's coming forth is designed and telemated it for you. Amen. Amen. So we're going to talk about last week uh, lesson on chapter two that uh, we talked about spiritual debt collectors. And then for the bonus notes that I gave them was called, I, I, think, I don't know if I gave them the title or not, but I, I think the title will be, don't be, uh, don't uh, be, uh, what was it? Don't be, uh, don't bury, don't be buried with the dead. Don't be buried with the dead. Okay. And, um, and also the scripture, uh, I think I came out was first Samuel 26, uh, and they supposed to read the chapter seven, I mean, verse seven through 25 for homework as well. All right. Well, Liz, if you could go ahead and share with me on last week's lesson, bring me a brace on what we, uh, learned. Amen. God bless. Right, right on. You came from, um, first Samuel 26, seven through 25, first Samuel 26, 7 through, 7 through 25. And it's like the spirit of manipulation that Christians can start to get desperate. And we cannot get in God's way. And God departed from Saul and that obedience is better than sacrifice and serve God and be obedient and make a conscious decision to serve God. We have to submit to God and study the scriptures. And that definitely we have to quit dip, dip and dabbling in strange fire. And that how sin leaves an open door 
and that when he opened the door, demons bring his posse and a whole bunch of stuff with them. And that sin, that sin brings demonic trafficking and that Christians can be harassed by demons and that spiritual bloodlines can overwhelm physical bloodlines and that spiritual bloodlines caused by the natural. And that every sickness in your body is 100%, 100% caused by demons and that we need to kick Satan and his demon forces out and, wa and wa then watch the change in your health. And that we need to give, we need to quit giving the demons legal access. And then speak the word, use the scriptures, legal ground in every right because of what you spoke and agreement. Spirits of the dead at familiar spirits, Job 7 and 9, Job 7 and 9. And the dead cannot return to the house they once lived in. And that that haunted the houses that are haunted are actually filled with demons and that demons do serve a little g and that satan has the master of deception second corinthians 11 14 through 15 second corinthians 11 14 through 15 and how satan masks around as light familiar spirits is an unclean spirit and that how saul was supposed to destroy the philist the philistines and that the word must continue to go forth. And that symptoms of a familiar spirit is feeling fatigue, chronic illness, irritability, crankiness, unhappiness, anger, rage, not previously presented, drugs, alcohol, pornography, lust, gluttony, mental disorders, nausea, stomach illnesses, um, sudden behavior, personality changes, heaviness or pressures, and feeling as we were being dragged, negative outlook. And then you talk about against meetings was the first one, like angel cards, psychic, read, psychic readings, Deuteronomy 18, 9 to 12, Deuteronomy 18, 9 to 12, and that we cannot be deceived by those demons. They will affect your children and future children generations, and that we have to be the curse break in our families, and that we have to deal with the strongholds, and that that will affect your bloodline, and that how the Lord warns his people against consulting with mediums and those familiar spirits. Leviticus 19 and 31. Leviticus 19 and 31 and give no regards to mediums. 1 Samuel 28 and 6. 1 Samuel 28 and 6 and John 10, 10. John 10, 10 and that how the dead cannot be involved with the living and the living can, cannot consult the dead. Ecclesiastes 9, 5 to 6. Ecclesiastes 9, 5 to 6, and 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 17. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 17, and how demons impersonate the dead, and that when the dreams and the dreaming of the dead lost loved ones are actually demons, and that that no way in that your loved one should be visiting you in your dreams, and that Satan will again appear as an angel of light. 2 Corinthians 11 through 14, 2 Corinthians 11 through 14, and then Matthew 24, 23 through 24, and Matthew 24, 23 through 24, and Isaiah 8, 19 and 20, Isaiah 8, 19 and 20, and that we must seek God's word, seek, seek scripture as the guide to the truth and standard of righteous living, and that God has revealed himself through his word, and that there is, there is peace and knowledge of the future. John 14, 27, John 14, 27, how Jesus leaves us with his peace. Isaiah 46, 9 through 11, and Isaiah 46, 9 through 11, that God, there is no God like our God. And Isaiah 50, 10 through 11, Isaiah 50, 10 through 11, fear the Lord and obey his word. And that we, that, that there is, that there are two choices and that, Revelation 22, 14 through 15. Revelation 22, 14 through 15. And blessed are those who do his commands. And that you talked about also as whoremongers, like a homewrecker. And those are my notes. Amen. Amen. Oh, you, you cover a, a big part of it. Amen. Um, we're going to give Fran a little chance to uh, dive in as well to add to it um 
but also we're going to go ahead and move on to the actual video that you, what was for assigned to you all for homework. And the video was uh, the Believer's uh, Authority by Kenneth Hagan. Uh, and if you uh, have the notes that and was able to watch that, I um, really appreciate if you share that with us as well. Liz, go ahead. Sorry about, sorry for that, about that. The Believer's Authority. He started out with Ephesians 1.16, Ephesians 1.16, and Ephesians 3.14 through 21, Ephesians 3.14 through 21, and that God will do it exceedingly and abundantly in our life and that we, can, that we can't even ask or imagine and that anointed prayers in the Bible, pray them for ourselves and others. Then start praying these over yourself. These certain truths that God's word, pray for others, Ephesians 6 and 12, Ephesians 6 and 12, and that we are wrestling against the powers and the rulers and the darkness of this world and the spiritual wickedness and that we have authority over these things. In Ephesians 1 and 3, Ephesians 1 and 3, God bless us with every spiritual blessing. Receive the blessing that belongs to us. And then if you don't act upon it, you won't enjoy the blessings. And that knowledge act upon brings results. And you can have authority and know, but not act upon it. And still want and still won't work for you. Authority to belong to okay, authority to the children to God. Devil cannot dominate him unless you allow him to do it. And that God makes us new creatures. John 8, 32. John 8, 32. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. We want to help people to get free. Be honest and sincere. Prayer and fasting. Prayer is important in that prayer will can not take the place of the word of God. Like breathing is important. How we talked that we're supposed to like you gotta, you gotta breathe and eat and how we connect to like prayer and fasting and that we have to read the word as well. And that we must feed on the word of God and get permanently delivered. And I talk about teaching and sowing a seed and our authority translated as power in the new testament. Okay. And that you shall know the truth and know the truth and set you free. Teach people the truth and that God God's word brings forth results. Luke 10 and 19. Luke 10 and 19, power and authority. The first one in scripture is really the word of authority and power and that we have to recognize that authority. Okay, after Ephesians, you kind of cut off. So go ahead and repeat Ephesians, the scripture. Okay. So, okay. So you got you got cut off there, Liz. So, um, just let me know when you're back. Amen. Amen. So again, uh, we're talking about the believers' authority, and the video that we uh, had for homework was by uh, Pastor Kenny uh, Kenneth Hagen as well. So uh, she was just summarizing her notes and everything so she got kicked out so we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and keep moving because we all we got a lot to cover tonight and we want to get that get get it out and done within our time frame we normally classes lasts for two and a half hours uh so we talked about the video we talk about the actual last week of what the, uh, the, the class we, uh, the chapter we read previous, and that previous class, of course, was about the spiritual debt collectors, okay? Sorry, Amen. Sorry. Sorry, about that. sorry about that. My Wi-Fi just went out, so I had to connect my phone, so sorry about that. And that 2 Corinthians 6 and 14, 2 Corinthians and 6 and 14, that we have a new covenant, and that we are never without help and that God is in me and he is an intelligent being and that God gives you confidence and that we have to make that to make a dedication in God and that you can't overwork your body as mortal. Matthew 28, 18, Matthew 28, 18. And God, God transferred that authority to the church and then the Bible and space humans and the illustrator of Christ in the church you can see it in Ephesians 
1, 20 to 22, Ephesians 1, 20 to 22, and Ephesians 2, 5 to 6, Ephesians 2, 5 to 6, Christ's grace is with you and that are saved even when we are dead to sin has quickened us. And together with Christ, by grace you are saved. And 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 14, 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 14, and the body is one and many members and all the members are one body. 2 Corinthians 6 and 14, 2 Corinthians 6 and 14, and that we cannot be unequally yoked and that John 14 and 12, John 14 and 12 and greater works. Then he went, he said again, Ephesians 6 and 12, Ephesians 6 and 12, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, and 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. And those are my notes. All right. Praise God. That is um, perfect. Um, so, so again, um, we summed up last week's uh, lesson about uh, the spiritual debt collectors, and now we're going to go into the actual um, the what's the the believer's authority uh, is and what we're supposed to be doing. So, if you guys can go ahead and get your get get your notebook and your pen ready, well, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the actual um, lesson for tonight, and the title is gonna be use your authority use your authority amen all right and the scripture uh coming out of is luke 4 verse 36 luke 4 36 okay and thank you liz for uh taking notes for me i appreciate that so it says that that we're all amazed and spoken among themselves saying what is what a word this is for with the authority and the power he commands the unclean spirit and they can they come out they came out okay um the word come on there's power in the word and that's what jesus used the word amen and then knowing that um for example um it said uh, the unclean spirits came out. Now, when you're doing uh, deliverance and you're binding up the spirit, the Holy Spirit can also uh, make it known to you what specific spirit that uh, the individual was dealing with, such as uh, if it's dealing with a lust spirit, a fear, or anger, rebellion, pride, or even control, okay? So that, you know, you can also... Uh, command that those specific, you know, spirits out as the Holy Spirit leads you. But Jesus just made it very simple. Unclean spirit, anything unclean um, basically means anything that's sin, any any type of sin is unclean, period, bottom line. But if, you know, when sometimes um, spirits are a little stubborn. So if you got those spirits that's stubborn, we know the ring leader of that normally is pride. So pride is connected to um, stiff neck, hard hearted, uh, stubbornness, arrogance. So uh, that is one of the things that we talk, you know, we, we'll talk about on a later date, you know, that uh, spirit. But also Jesus, uh, the, the go on, Jesus had just cast out an unclean spirit from a man by exercising his spirit, spiritual authority. And um and ecclesia is the Greek word means the power or, or ruler of our government that delegates uh, the le legal rights to speak and the act of behalf of a king, okay? See, the authority is delegated and, and the legal rights to speak or initiate uh, actions as well. So example, a uh, police uh, man in a uniform has the de uh, has the delegate the right to what speak and act on the behalf of the government. Okay, uh, and then we'll go into power. We're going to next word is power and dom uh, don um, um, dominus is the Greek word for the supernatural strength and ability to carry out a task. Amen. And Jesus received his authority from his what? Heavenly Father as part of his commission. 
So through intimacy, ladies and gentlemen, and obedience, he maintained his authority and power. Amen. So John 5 and 19 talks about this. John 5 verse 19 says, Jesus gave them this answer. Verily, tr very truly, I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. But, um, he can do only what he sees his father doing because whatever the father does, the son also does. Amen. Amen. So Jesus exercised his authority by strong, forceful, verbal commands, okay? And then Luke 4, 35 talks about that. Luke 4, verse 35 says, be quiet. Jesus said, harsh, come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down before the man, uh, before then all and came out without injuring him, amen? So that just tell you, the authority in his voice, okay? He didn't have to, he didn't have to speak in tongues. And just to remind you that a lot of times we would speak in tongues, demons don't understand the heavenly language when you speak it in tongues. Now they the, the, now when you speak in natural words, that type of thing, they definitely understand. Reason why they don't understand the speaking in tongues, because that is your communication line with God spirit versus spirit, you know, spirit, um, um, uh, in, I mean, con communicating spirit by spirit, amen, so that's a good thing that the enemy cannot, uh, when you, when you praying in the spirit, he don't have no indication, no knowledge of what's being said, which is a good thing, okay, so use your secret word, weapon, I always tell y'all, pray in the morning, 30 minutes before you start your day in, in your heavenly language, 30 minutes in the evening, just to exercise your gift of praying in tongues. Amen. I, and it's just, it's just one of those things that you are connecting with the Holy Spirit. It's, it's getting in tune and being able to hear his voice, be able to recognize uh, the Holy Spirit as it teaches you, as you as it directs you as well. Amen. Amen. So the power of Jesus demonstrate was the Holy Spirit flowing through him. Matthew 12, verse 28, Matthew 12, verse 28. It said, but if it is by the spirit of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. So I'm gonna talk about this later into the lesson because that is one of the uh, number one things of using your authority is casting out demons. And I'm gonna talk about that later on in a minute okay but number one i want you to know that using your authority for the physical protection using your authority for physical protection amen and that's second samuel 22 verse 3 second samuel 22 verse 3 my god is my rock and whom i take refuge my strength my shield i'm sorry and the horn of my salvation he is my stronghold, my refugee, and my savior from violence, violent people that you saved me. Amen. See, salvation includes more than just a, a, a guarantee of going to heaven, that just the, the beginning of that. See, salvation is a big word. And the Greek language, it literally means deliverance, safety, perseverance, um, material and, and temporary, 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 uh, deliverance from danger, uh, parting, restoration, healing, wholeness, and soundness. Amen. So Ephesians 2, verse 8 through 9, uh, Ephesians 2, verse 8 through 9 says, for by grace you have been saved through faith and that, that not of yourself, it is the gift of God and not of works, lest anyone should boast, okay? So if you get somebody that's boasting that they're doing that they're doing this and they're doing that and not giving God no credit or giving God any glory, something wrong with that picture. That, that sounds like pride is on display, okay? So when you, you, got, you got a person that, you know, boasting and what they're doing, me, 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 I, 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 listen. That is a, a red flag for the spirit of pride. 
to come in, okay? Because we already know that was the same reason why Lucifer got thrown out of heaven because he he was putting himself above God and and, and he he had he had an eye issue. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. So five, uh, I'm going to give you five promises that you can claim as a believer. Okay. And uh, number one is insurance of your salvation, assurance of answering, answered prayer, uh, assurance of, of, of victory, assurance of forgiveness, assurance of guidance. Amen. Amen. And I know I, I, I kind of, I'm gonna go back over. I know I was going a little fast, but yeah, five promises that you are, you you can claim as a believer. Number one was insurance of salvation, assurance of answered prayer, assurance of victory, assurance of forgiveness, and assurance of guidance. All right, amen. So, do you know what that means? It means that you don't have to be afraid of anything harming you. Of your uh, or your children's physically, and Luke ten and nineteen. Luke ten and nineteen says, "I have given you authority to trample over snakes and scorpions, and to overcome all the power of the enemy, and nothing will harm you." See, the physical protection for you and your family is a covenant, right? See, peace and and uh, safety and covering from uh comment uh from distract. I mean, uh from uh a disaster or even harm of any kind belongs to you, okay? Um, any kind that, that it doesn't belong to you, but I'm saying that possibly you we have engaged or we have encountered, let me use that. But see, it's not, a, it's not let me not let you guys know that it's not God will that people go and, and shoot up, like for instance, uh, a children's school, okay? It's not God's will that we and, and our children are filled with sickness and diseases and suffering and injuries, okay? It is not God's will that we suffer under any part of the of the curse. But the devil has come to kill and destroy, and he was looking for a loophole and a way to break that cycle or that circle of protection that that surrounds you, okay? That circle that protects you, amen? So use number two, use your authority uh, to drive out sickness, amen? Use your authority to dry out sickness. Luke 9 and 1, Luke 9 verse 1 says, it says that he called his 12 disciples together and gave them what? Power and authority over all devils, not some. You see, that's where we, the saints, we gotta, we gotta, read read the read read all of it all right he said all devils and to cure diseases see a lot of times i see a lot of uh, uh saints we we'll talk more about the devil 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 demons demon demons and not even put god on the uh, uh on the higher rank of he's over god can overcome all that See, when you give the enemy too much credit and too much leeway, then of course he's going to be bigger than your God that you're serving. You see what I'm saying? Because you, you're, you're putting God in a, in a box. You're putting God as, 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 as he's not capable, you know, to, to uh, and he's not powerful. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what the enemy does in our mind. He deceives us to believe that, you know, I, I got to keep going through this. And I, I, I you know, um, I was listening to a person, it, it, you know, where it, it has almost become their norm of talking about this individual situation. You know, I, I tell an individual that you shouldn't be going through a spiritual warfare and five years into that spiritual battle. You know what I'm saying? It's some, some way it, it should be we be have to take a fast. We need to take a inventory of our walk. We have to, you know, literally, you know, try to, you know, say, oh God, I surrender. This is like, I, I can't do this anymore. Whatever you're trying to bring out of me, God, please, Lord, show me what I'm carrying, what I'm holding on to. Amen. So when you be transparent and be honest, and recognize that you got, you know, some hangups, some weakness, some issues, then that's where God can intervene and come in and help you, okay? So 
So we, that, that's what we talk about it when the sickness. That's just like with, if you hold it on unforgiveness, that's a door opening for sickness to come in. Okay, that is literally a a a a, 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 um, a part of of, of 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 attacking your immune system when you hold on to unforgiveness. Unforgiveness, then there's hardness of the heart. There's bitterness, resentment, and etc. Okay, so he said to them. They were to what? Preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Who who are we talking to? He talking to us. If you are a believer, come on. If you are a believer, he said he want us to what? To preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick, amen? And he gave them authority, amen? So Christ did not need this authority. He already had it. And he gave this authority to his followers, amen? His disciples, all right? We are God's followers. We, is, we are his disciples, amen? So you have authority over sickness and diseases, even a cold, every cold, amen? Flu, backache, cancer, heart disease, and all of, it, all of uh, the diseases that you, you know, dealing with or know of, okay? You have the authority through Christ Jesus, amen? So why do we sometimes face these challenges? Why? When I tell you, when you start taking ownership of that illness, my medication, my blood pressure, my diabetes, my this, this, whatever disease, you're now taking ownership of that, which gives the enemy that legal assets to continue keeping you bound in that illness, in that uh, uh, infirmity, amen? See, God is not going to override your authority. Check that, ladies and gentlemen. I said what? God is what? Is not going to override your authority, okay? He gave Adam authority and he didn't override Adam's decision to relinquish it to the Satan. He has given you the same authority in the earth and he has given you the way to victory in every situation in his word, amen? So, but he, but he wouldn't override your authority. He will let you die sick. If you choose to do so, you would have to ignore every healing scripture. Come on. Or in the Bible, you, you hear what I'm saying? You will have to literally ignore every healing scripture in the Bible and to not believe that God is a healer, not knowing, uh, you, you Jesus paid it all. Come on. By his stripes, we are healed. So that's why it's good if you're going through any type of illness in your body, Google healing scriptures. Add that to your prayer on a daily basis. Amen. Until it gets to your spirit, until it aligns up with, with your spirit as well. Amen. So, and that Jesus brought brought for you when he bore your sickness and carried your diseases on the cross. Come on. But if you have the authority to go ahead, what you will do, you will normally will just lay down and die, right? See, God will not stop you. So if you're talking about your symptoms and sickness and you're relinquishing your authority to Satan as Adam did in the Garden of Eden, that wouldn't get that wouldn't get no results. You wouldn't be able to get any results from that. Number two, use your authority to cast out demons. Use your authority to cast out demons. You can't tell me you've been in a deliverance ministry for over a year and you're not doing, you got delivered, got demons cast out of you and you're not doing the same work. Something wrong with that picture if you're not doing it, okay? Because all believers should be already doing this. Okay, should already be casting out demons. Matthew 16 and 17 talks to that. Uh, Mark 16, I'm sorry, 17. Mark 16, verse 17. They will what? Cast out demons in my name. Not Frankie name, not Liz name, not Fran's name, but in Jesus name. Amen. All right. So demonic activities isn't something that you hear preached about on many Sunday mornings, uh, so, uh uh, sermons okay but it, it 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 does exist okay and there is a simple way to deal with it 
by taking your authority, certain countries sees a greater level of demonic activity, but it but it's everywhere, and it isn't uh, to be taught torment with or to, uh, torment with not even for a minute. Okay. See Mark five verse one through twenty, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but Mark five verse one through twenty, you already know the story. Um, we see how Jesus handled this demon when he drove them out of the demon possessed man. So when I read demon possessed, that right there, let I had some type of indication that this was a non-believer because we, if you're saved, bought by the bought by the blood of Jesus, Jesus owned this body right he owns this body okay so we as christians we cannot be demon possessed but we can be what oppressed depressed come on influenced harassed torment and etc by demons but not possessed so that's when i read that that would gave me an indication that this was a non-believer and you got and think about it he dealt he had not one demon he had many, which was, was called legion, okay? So we already know the story that, that the Jesus cast these demons out to what? A herd of, 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 of pigs, and they basically ran over the cliff, drowned. Sound like suicide to me, right? So let you know with these demons inside of people, what it can do. It was job is what to kill, steal, and destroy. Okay. So he used his authority. Jesus used his authority, the same authority that has been given to us, and to drive them out. Amen. Luke 10 and 19. Luke 10 and 19. Behold, I have given you the authority to trample over serpents and scorpions and over the power of the of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. I, I don't know. I just had to say that verse twice because I need to, I need people of God to, 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 to just put that on a sticky note. Put it on your mirror. Because see, we don't know what we are we capable of. We don't know what's inside of us. Okay. Amen. Next, use your authority to subdue, subdue the weather. Use your authority to subdue the weather. Mark 4, verse 39. Mark 4, verse 39 says, Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Amen. So, with so many destruction, storms, and harmful tornadoes, floods, and and uh, other uh, happenings, many people have asked, is God behind it? The answer is absolutely not. See, Jesus said in John 10 and 10, John 10 and 10, he said, the thief does not come except to what? Steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may what have life and they may have it more abundantly, amen? See, Jesus is our example when it comes to dealing with the destruction storms. We know Jesus spoke to the wind and said to the water, peace be still, and they obeyed him. See, we have the same place of authority through Jesus. It is not his place to enforce the laws of the kingdom of on earth. It's ours. Amen. Next, use your authority for your finances. Oh, this is going to help a lot of people that's walking in poverty that's struggling amen use your authority for finance for finances okay colossians 2 verse 15 colossians chapter 2 verse 15 says he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities and ashamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross amen See, if you ever experience the stress that comes from financial pre pressure, you know how difficult it is when you are so uh, uh, struggling in that and don't have enough money to pay your bills. See, there are things that can block financial blessings such as being in unforgiveness. I'm going to say that again. So, so making sure that you check, do a heart check. Come on. Do a hard check. What did I say that can block your finance? Blessings is 
unforgiveness, okay? Failing to walk in love. Come on. If you're failing to walk in love, failing to hide in sores or sow seed or operating without integrity, okay? See, those areas should be checked first. But if everything is in the line with the word of God, you may be facing an attack of the devil on your finances. He comes to what? Still kill and destroy. And he does not want you blessed. So here are, here's the good news of this guy. See, Jesus reduced principalities and powers to nothing. He took away the devil's power to do dominate us, to dominate um, the enemy in, in, in any way. Okay. He took, okay. He took away the devil's power to dominate us in any way. So including in the realm of our finances, our job is to act on the truth. Okay. As long as we like the devil has, you know, if you hang out with the devil, if you entertain in the devil, if you promoting the devil, then it what? It has power over our finances and his, he will, okay? But if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth what God's word says about your finances, you will be taking authority and you will get what you need, amen? Matthew 6, verse 10. Matthew 6, verse 10 said, Jesus taught his disciple what to pray on earth as it is in heaven. And follow this example. Christ's disciples boldly use their spiritual authority by what? Preaching, preaching the gospel, casting out demons, healing the sick. And that was in Luke uh, 9, 1 through 6. Luke 9, verse 1 through 6. And perform many other uh, astounding, and astu astounding uh, miracles as well. So next one. This is the last one, ladies. Use your authority to make disciples. Come on, y'all already know the Great Commission. I always, I always tell y'all that what is the Great Commission? Jesus set the tone. He already set the atmosphere. He already walked the walk. So all we got to do is follow in his footsteps because he already told us that signs and wonders and miracles should follow us and also telling us that we should be doing what? Greater things in his name, amen? Greater things in his name. Come on, there's no limitation there. That say so, so, Matthew's uh, uh, 28, verse 18 to 20. Matthew's 28, verse 18 through 20 says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given. Come on, has been given to me, has been given to the believers. Amen. So therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and in the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teach them. To obey everything that I have commanded you, and assure and surely I am with you always to the very end of age. Amen. So we must live an example out before those that we are trying to reach. We see this mo uh this model or uh, uh a role model we should see you know it, it's in the bible that what jesus already demonstrated okay he already set the tone as i always say all right so jesus is a perfect perfectly in his life okay he lived a perfect life before his disciples and before all those to whom he taught the truth so we as followers of jesus must live the same way living a life come on marked by obedience so that our message of the gospel will not be undermined by our example. So we always tell you, you cannot waver in your faith. You cannot minister to somebody and you live in a double life. You know what I'm saying? That was a hypocrite. That's a hypocrite, okay? And, and, and another thing, when you're doing deliverance, you can't live a double life, period. You got to live a holy life. You got to live, live a righteous life. Because why? Because those demons, those demons will, they will uh, expose you. Yeah, they will expose you. And they let you know, you know, you can't front. You can't front in front of everybody and, and, and flow show like you, you, you can cast out demons when you sleeping with uh, unsaved, uh, uh, un unsaved. When you sleeping or fornicating or sleeping with, uh, you know, someone outside marriage. Okay. All right. So 
Know that Matthew 28, verse 20, Matthew 28 and 20. See, teach these new disciples to what? Obey all the commandments I have given you. I want to kind of kind of go back on that a little bit more because see, if you're in healing and many ministry, as a leader here, our job is to send you out, make disciples so you can read. Cycle, recycle, meaning making other disciples as well, giving what you have learned, giving, you know, and that's why when they, they're working with me uh, through deliverance, my ministry team and, and leaders, they're able to do the same thing when they, guess what? Because God going to see, I almost say God going to test you and see if your training is in vain. If you learn where you've been sitting under, now he, you're going to be able to utilize the, the, the gifts and what God has taught us when it comes to uh, making disciples, when it comes to casting out demons. Amen. So you will get sometimes you get that one on one training with your family or with your friend, you know, however, however. OK, but you will get that training one way or the other. That's why I tell my team. You have to be ready in season as well as out of season. Don't ever say that you're not capable. Never say that I, 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 I need to sit under a little longer. No, you got the Holy Spirit resides in you. So if you depend on the Holy Spirit, guess what? The Holy Spirit is going to teach you. The Holy Spirit is going to guide you. The Holy Spirit is going to push you on into that, into that fire. I almost said into that fight, but yes. Yeah, and to the point that you you you're gonna know that no harm is gonna come against you. You're not gonna smell like smoke. You 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 can go in the flood and not drown. You can go in the water and not drown. You know that's the scripture right there. No harm will come against you. Amen. So again, teach these new disciples to obey all the commandment that I have given you. That's the word of God. Give them the biblical basic. Give them the biblical foundation. Don't give them no. No, no stuff that you, 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 you know, that, that others, them other books and stuff, what I mean, other books, you know, they got so much, these new age books and satanic books and things of that nature. You want to keep it in the, in the basic, the word of God. And that's the basic, that's where you want to build from the basic foundation. And that's, and that is the word of God. Amen. Now, See, the process of what we can discipleship is to be a model after Jesus' example with his own disciples. So while this would seem obvious, unfortunately, the contemporary church has greatly neglected it. See, Jesus entered into the relationship with his, with his, with his men and he trained them on the job. See, over the course of his ministry on earth, the disciple observed him and questioned him. He shot them. Come on, he shot them all, right? And he scared them. He explained his, his, his teaching to them and then asked them to try it out for themselves. Come on, he sent them out. He sent them out, didn't he? He sent them out in twos. Come on, he sent them out in 70. He sent them out. And they were connected to him through his belief in them. So the authority of his, of his call and the power of his life and his clear focus of his mission is to seek and say, Luke 19 and 10, Luke 19 verse 10 said, for the son of the man is come to seek and save that which was lost. Amen. Amen. So let's go ahead. We're going to do this renunciation real quick. What's my time frame? Amen. Amen. All right, we can probably do it in six minutes in Jesus' name. Seven, I say seven. Okay, okay. don't want to rush this. So I want to say we're gonna go uh, repeat this prayer after me. It's a renunciation prayer. And if you have anything going on, heat, coldness, tingleness, uh, burping, teary eyes, yawning, whatever, gassy, whatever it is, just put it in the chat for me as well so we know that you're getting free you're getting free but basically we sending those them them little spirits back to dry places we send them wherever jesus may send them amen amen so first repeat after me i am redeemed from the curse of the law i break all generation curses of pride
lust and perversion, rebellion and witchcraft, idolatry and poverty, rejection and fear, confusion and addiction and addiction, death and destructions in the name of Jesus. Think of anything that you're dealing with, okay? Put it in there. In the net, put it under the blood, in the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. If it's fear, come on, whatever it is. I command all generational spirits that came into my life during the conception, conception in the womb, in the birth canal and through the umbilical cord to come out in the name of Jesus. I break all spoken curses and negative words that I have spoken over my life in the name of Jesus. I break all spoken curses and negative words spoken over my life by others, including those in authority in the name of Jesus. I command all ancestry, uh, 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 descendants or ancestors, spirits of Freemasonry, idol tree, witchcraft, false religion, Lust and perversion to come out of my life in the name of Jesus. I command all perverted spirit of lust, rejection and fear, sickness and infirmity, diseases and anger, Hatred and confusion, failure and poverty to come out of my life in the name of Jesus. I break the legal rights of all generation spirits operating behind the curse in the name of Jesus. You have no legal right to operate in my life. I I rebuke all familiar spirits and spirit guides that will try to operate in my life, my, my ancestors, in the name of Jesus. I renounce all false beliefs, systems, philosophies, inherited by my ancestors in the name of Jesus. I break all curses on my finances from my ancestors that cheated or mishandled money in the name of Jesus. I break all curses of sickness and diseases and command all in, um, was that? Uh, oh, so inherited the sickness and diseases to leave my body now in the name of Jesus. Through Jesus, my family is blessed. Repeat that. Through Jesus, my family is blessed and protected. I renounce all pride inherited from my ancestors in the name of Jesus. I break all oaks and vows and packs made with the devil by my ancestors in the name of Jesus. I break all curses by agents of Satan spoken against my life and secret in the name of Jesus. 
I break all written curses that will affect my life, my family, my marriage in the name of Jesus. I break every time release curse that would activate in my life as I grow older in the name of Jesus. I break every curse of Babylon hired against my life in the name of Jesus. Lord, turn every curse spoken against my life into blessings. I break all generation rebellion that will cause me to resist the Holy Spirit. I break all curses of death spoken by people in authority in my nation, over my nation, in Jesus' name. Let the saints say, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So go ahead and put in the comment on Facebook as well as in my Zoom if you hit any type of manifestation. Ha, huh? my God. Go ahead and put that in there. Burping, gassing, yawning. Come on, teary eyed. Feel some heat. Amen. Feel the heat. Amen. That's the consuming fire. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Letting you know that, amen, that this is another layer has, has, has came off. You're being free from. And if you had any other type of those manifestations, that means that those unclean spirits had to leave. So matter of fact, we thank you, God, right now. We ask you to send them right now to dry places, oh God, uh, never to return in the mighty name of Jesus. And we pray for your freedom. We loose right now the fruits of the Holy Spirit. We loose right now your Holy Ghost power as well. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Uh, somebody, oh, oh, okay, TMI. Ah, I got you. I'm like, what TMI? BR means, I know what it means, bathroom break. Yeah, that's okay. You got to release them. Them unclean spirits got to go somewhere. They, I mean, they, they got to come out of the openings, those different opens, those are gates. So think about the eyes is the gate, the ears is the gate, a mouth is the gate, back here is the gate, you know, back, yeah. So yeah, um, amen. So we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and get ready to read the book, amen, amen. And if you guys feel that, you know, you're on Facebook or you seeing this uh, on YouTube, you can make an appointment with me and we'll walk you through inner healing and deliverance. It normally takes two and a half hours. Um, we actually have a form to, for you to fill out as well, which will help you uh, and help us to allow you to get to the root or what uh, happened throughout your childhood trauma as well has causing to bled over into your adulthood, which is causing you to struggle, which is causing your faith to be waver. You know, it's a lot of things blocking, could be blocking you from getting your freedom. So, amen. So again, email me or Inbox me through Facebook Messenger or on YouTube if you're serious and you're desperate of a change and want to be free. Amen. This is what healing and deliverance is all about. Amen. And this is what Jesus came to do on the earth. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's go ahead and start our book. Amen. I was waiting on for a few of my... Okay, they 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 back, they back. Okay, Liz, can you go ahead and start on page 39? Well, I know you're on the Kindle uh page, but go ahead and start with the authority of the believers, if you will be. Go ahead, sweetie. Gotcha. The authority of the believer. Behold, I give to you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all power of the enemy, and nothing by and shall by any means hurt you. Luke 10:19. As New Testament believers, we have been given supernatural authority to overcome familiar spirits through, this, through the name of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. I can't emphasize this point enough. 
However, if we are going to successfully operate in this authority, we must understand the way authority works. Imagine that a person is driving 65 miles per hour on a 25 mile per hour street that they are being pursued by the police, that they would probably notice the flashing lights of the police cart and slow down, pull over to the side of the road, roll down the window, provide the officer with driver's license and registration. The police officer would likely ask them if they know, knew they post they posted speed limit and question why they had been driving so fast. Most reasonable people would cooperate with the officer, displaying a tremendous amount of respect. Why? because of the police officer's legal authority. While there are some people who would not obey the instructions of the police, such as individuals are, by far the exception. Police officers have received delegated authority to confront, apprehend, and arrest those who break the law. If the individual violating the law does not respond to the badge of authority, the officer is empowered to use force to back up that authority. This will normally cause the person to be confronted to comply with the officer's directives. Now imagine a police officer who does not abide the, by, by the rule of the law. They would compromise their ability to operate in their authority if the officer were, were corrupt, turning a blind eye to crimes being committed and allow lawbreakers to do as they please. That officer would be guilty of neglecting to execute and uphold the trust they have been given. Operating in spiritual power and authority. In many ways, we are like spiritual police officers. We have been given authority by Jesus Christ to confront, apprehend, and arrest demonic powers. And when we are abiding by the rule of the law in our spiritual lives, familiar spirits and other demonic powers recognize our authority. Unlike natural police officers, the authority we carry is not backed by an earthly institution, but all by heaven. I will discuss this concept in demonic powers to concept more detail shortly. This does not mean that demonic powers won't continue to attempt to break spiritual laws or bring destruction to people's lives. But it does mean that as believers, we have jurisdictional authority to confront these spirits and deal with them accordingly. Remember, nothing can function, whether in a positive or negative way, in our spiritual lives without permission. And for this reason, familiar spirits are constantly looking for permission to operate. Again, They can only operate in areas of our lives where we grant them access. I have literally spoken to to hundreds of thousands of people who are struggling with the oppression of demonic powers. Some of these demonic powers manifest in the form of sickness, while others manifest in the form of addiction, compulsion, or calamity. However, one thing is certain. If there is a demonic activity, especially persistent activity, some form of agreement has been established in spiritual realm either on the part of the individual or on the part of someone who has influence in their lives. This agreement can be conscious or unconscious. Many years ago, I spoke with a woman who was dealing with a chronic illness. She had been diagnosed with a sickness at a very young age, so she had lived with the condition for nearly her her entire life. When she experienced an attack, she would often collapse as a result of tremendous pain inflicted. One day, I asked her if she desired to be whole. It was then she realized she had to come into agreement with a spirit of infirmity, a familiar spirit. It is not uncommon for people with certain conditions to gather around and build community with others based on their shared afflictions. While I'm an advocate of support groups, we must be careful not to build community around demons. Unfortunately, many people have unknowingly granted agreement to demonic entities because they have believed a narrative that was untrue and unscriptural. For example, they may think that their condition is chronic and hopeless. Beloved, this is a life in the pit of darkness. You can be healed. You can be free. You can be whole in every area of your life. However, demons do not want you to believe this is possible or walk in truth. They will torment, harass, and oppress, and afflict in order to maintain their open door, the door of agreement. Four principles for exercising spiritual authority. In order to exercise authority over demonic powers, we must understand and align our lives with the four key spiritual principles. As with other truths, these principles overlap, but it's essential to recognize each aspect. Number one, all authority and power have a source. First, all authority and power have a source. The type and degree of authority and power is determined by its source. 
God is all encompassing and therefore he is our number one force for everything we need, life and godliness. Second Peter 1, 3. Ultimately, all power comes from spiritual realm, including life itself. In John 1, 1 through 4, we read, in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and a life was the light of men. As created beings, our very life was breathed into us by God. As scripture tells us, for in him we live and move and have our being, Acts 17, 28. Through must all the, therefore, any power we operate in through must come from God, who is the legal source of all things incorruptible. This power is obtained. This power is obtained, received through transference, connection where there is no connection there is no power imagine that one of your electrical appliances is disconnected from the power outlet and it doesn't have the batteries inside now imagine that you press the on button to that appliance what happens you guessed it absolutely nothing the same principle is the true of our spiritual lives if we attempt to operate in the spiritual power and authority that our heavenly father has given us without maintaining a healthy connection to him that power and authority will have no potency. Jesus taught us, abide in me and I in you. The branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vein. No more can you except you abide in me. John 15 and 4. This verse points to the interconnection between the branch, us as believers and the vine, Jesus, and his complete and divine personhood. It is necessary for us to walk in power. We have no life or power on our own. When we remain connected to God, bearing fruit, or producing results for this kingdom becomes inevitable. It is a supernatural consequence of being joined with the one who is life. It is impossible to come up empty if, when, if and when God is in the helm of your life. Hold up, man. Pause one quick second. Amen. Fran, you, can you pick up? Where it says yes. authority yes. and power? Okay, receive and transfer. Yes. Go ahead. Authority and power are received or transferred. Second, in connection with knowing that God is our ultimate source, we must understand that all true authority is received or transferred. As I mentioned earlier, we do not have any spiritual authority outside of Jesus. We have to experience a level of pressing of revelation that brings us to a place of conviction that without Christ, we can do nothing. See John 15 and 4. Without transference from the one and only all-powerful living God, we can have no real sustainable power. In fact, if we operate in any other supernatural or natural power that does not align with the word of God, that power is illegal, illegitimate and can bring people under submission to the influence of demonic spirits. Contrary to, what may, contrary to what many believers think, sitting in a pew in a church is not a qualification for receiving God's power. How do we know this? There are many believers who will have attended church for years, but do not exercise and perhaps have never exercised God's power. They haven't experienced his power in their lives or seen it demonstrated within their families. It is necessary that we first receive from God in order to operate from heaven. This does not have to do with attaining head knowledge about him. Rather, it is a conscious revelation of the power of God flowing to us and through us because of the presence and the work of Holy Spirit in our lives. We must acknowledge the Spirit of God as the one who lives in us. Because of him, we have supernatural capabilities and the conviction of Christ in you. Colossians 1 and 27. To operate in power and authority. It is necessary for us to understand that familiar spirits cannot inhabit environments where God's presence and spirits are host or spirit are hosted, dare I say, continuously. 
the great men of God in the book of Acts had to continually walk in spiritual victory to see kingdom results. It would have been difficult for them to have seen the sustained the move of God if they had to yield to his power and his way of doing things. Just before Jesus ascended to heaven, he told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem until they had received heavenly power. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry you in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with the power from on high. Luke 24 and 49. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and to the utter, uttermost part of the earth, Acts 1 and 8. After Christ's resurrection, it was necessary for his followers to receive God's spirit in order to be able to function in the same way he had when he walked on the earth, Acts 10, 38. Acts 10 and 38 reminds us, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. The level of authority and power that is transferred is determined by the strength of what is delegated. In the Gospels, Jesus referred to delegated power when, con when con commissioning his disciples. Behold, I give to you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke 10 and 19. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Go. You, therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Matthew 28, 18 and 20. Hmm. Hmm. Authority is delegated from one person or government to another. Delegated authority is the right to act on the behalf of the one who has the ultimate authority. Earlier, we talked about how, for the believer, Christ is the only legal access to power and authority. So the spiritual authority that every Christian possesses comes from Jesus alone. We do not have any spiritual authority outside of him. Jesus was intentional about delegating his power and authority to his disciples, including us. Verily, verily, I say to you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works that these shall he do, because I go to my father. John 14 and 12. Christ delegated authority to his apostles and other disciples so that Wherever they went, the people they met would encounter the life of Jesus, the life of the one who had been given all power and authority in heaven and on earth. The disciples were thus equipped with the power to heal and to set free those who were bound. Healing and deliverance were signatures of Jesus's ministry while he was on the earth. Hence, through the Holy Spirit, Jesus' followers became like the one who commissioned and sent them, and they replicated his actions, his acts. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and a great grace was upon them all, Acts 4 and 33. Therefore, in order to receive from heaven so that we can function from heaven, we must be connected to heaven. We must be in a posture to manifest what Christ has made available to us. This means we must be deliberate and obedient in our walk with God. 
If we want to experience the victory that Christ paid for us and to function in demonstrative power, we cannot be complacent or rebellious. As born again believers, we need to be connected to the kingdom of God through the word of God, which is the manual for how to operate in kingdom authority. It is essential that we surrender our lives to the Lord, be prepared to sacrifice for Christ's sake, and keep ourselves available for God's kingdom, for God's kingdom purposes. In order to receive from heaven so that we can function from heaven, we must be connected to heaven. Number three, authority and power are jurisdictional. Third, we must remember that authority and power are jurisdictional. In chapter one, we discuss the word jurisdiction in regard to God's original mandate for human beings in the Garden of Eden, as well as in reference to the legal rights of evil spirits to our lives when we give them an invitation or opening. Let's review the meaning of the concept of jurisdiction. The official power to make legal decisions and judgments and the extent of the power to make legal decisions and judgments. All authority in the kingdom of God operates according to the divine principle of jurisdiction. To use an illustration from the earthly realm, an individual police officer officer does not have authority in every location in their community, state, and country. The officer is authorized to exercise their delegated authority within the specific precinct or jurisdiction to which they have been assigned under the supervision of their superior. As believers, we have jurisdictional authority over demons, and over the devil himself. However, we do not have authority over another human being's will. God himself does not infringe upon the human will. It is also important to note that there are levels of spiritual authority. When Jesus declared, all power is given to me in heaven and in earth, Matthew 28 and 18, he acknowledged that the authority and power he possessed were granted to him by his heavenly father. The Greek word translated power in this verse is exousia, which is often translated as authority. The father was, all, was always the son's source of life and power. Jesus also acknowledged the jurisdiction of his authority. In heaven, and in earth. He sent out the apostles with the same authority that he had. And if you had the same authority, it would stand to reason that the authority had the same jurisdiction. Woo, it's powerful. As Jesus followers, we too have been given authority in heaven and in earth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus. That ought to be good news to somebody. Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. This principle has powerful implications, not only for individual believers, but also for the church as a whole. In Matthew 16 and 18, Jesus said, I will build my church. The Greek word translate church is ecclesia which among many meanings refers to gatherings or legislature. The church is a spiritual community endowed with heavenly power and authority. We have been given the ability to legislate spiritual atmospheres. God has given the body of Christ authority over regions and territories. But when the church collectively concedes its spiritual authority, it can make room for the operation of demonic spirits. If we come into agreement with the plans of the enemy by making compromises and concessions, our towns and cities will be deeply impacted. Years ago, I was living in a crime-ridden and drug-infested neighborhood. 
there was a crack house across the street from my house. The people who occupied occupied that crack house was engaged in trafficking and prostitution as well. One day, my mother-in-law asked me if I knew what was going on in that house. Of course I knew what was going on, but I told her that we couldn't do anything about it. She quickly exclaimed, I thought you had the authority. I was both shocked and challenged by her reply. I said to myself, she is right. I do have the authority in Christ. That same day, I went to the edge of my porch and said, in the name of Jesus, I declare that this house is shut down and then went back into my home. Two weeks later, the crack house was abandoned and it was eventually condemned by the city. We never called a single governmental agency about the problem. Although there is nothing wrong with calling the authorities, instead, we dealt with the problem spiritually. Imagine what would happen if churches all over America began to declare with authority that the trafficking and prostitution in crack houses in their various cities would cease and desist. As Jesus followers, we too have been given authority in heaven and in earth. Number four, authority and power have a cost. Fourth, we must be aware that there is a cost to operating in kingdom authority and power. It is not a passive stance. Authority only functions when you operate in the confines of the instructions of the one delegating it to you. This means we cannot be estranged from God's manual or word and maintain legal power to operate. If the enemy can disconnect us from our spiritual source, he can strip us of our power. Jesus Christ was aware of and deliberate in acknowledging the source of his power. Then Jesus, then answered Jesus. Woo. <laughs> Woo. Then answered Jesus and said to them, Verily, verily, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do for what things soever he does, these also does the son likewise. John 5 and 19. It is the case for millions of people that even after receiving Christ and experiencing being born again, Within a very short time, they become lukewarm or cold concerning the things of God. Why is that? These are various, they, there, there are various factors. Perhaps they were not disciple or did not maintain a connection with their local church, if they had one, and therefore fell into stagnation. I emphasize this because I know how easy it can be to, to stray from from or become disconnected from God and the life of his spirit. It does not matter how uh, ecstatic or Ill illustrious our encounters with God may be. The accuser of the, of the brethren is forever on a mission to divert our attention from the creator so that we do not come into full manifestation of his power in us. Remember that Satan's motivation is to steal and to kill and to destroy, John 10 and 10. Yes, there are costs to maintaining our relationship with God, such as vigilance and continually allowing his word to conform us to the image of his son. However, the costs are, are greater if we become estranged from God and his word as well as from the body of Christ. The body of Christ. Pause, oh, baby. Pause. Oh. Amen. All right, man. You ready? You see where we left off at? Yeah. Jesus is <laughs> Jesus always operated anointing for which he came to the earth. We must remember what it cost Jesus to redeem us. Christ's obedience to God, the Father required him to operate within the parameters of the Father. The Father required him to operate within the parameters the Father had given him. 
to, and to rely totally on the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus not only paid the price of obedience and sacrifice throughout his three years of ministry, but he also paid the ultimate price of death on the cross. As a result, the Father sent him far above principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, that is with to come. Ephesians 1.21. Thank you, Jesus. Because Jesus paid the full cost, died for our sins, and rose triumphantly. He is the one who is able to stay, sustain and help us. You and I function from his power and not our own. Now to him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, Ephesians 3.20. It is Jesus' responsibility to save and deliver, and it is our responsibility to abide in him. Again, it is his power that works in us, and when we stay connected to our source, that is why our, our stance in Christ has to be deliberate. We have to be able for, to be available to, for, that for, <coughs> to use his use in, use us in his purpose. We must sacrifice our time and energy to read, study, and meditate on the word of God. We need to operate as God wills and to surrender his plans for our lives. Christ lives in and through us to establish and operate in the reality of God's kingdom here on earth. For you, Jesus, the lamb were slain and have redeemed us by God, by your blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation that made us through God's kings and priests and that we shall reign on the earth. Revelations 5, 9 through 10. Each and every one of us has a calling in our lives. How we function within that calling depends on our connection to the source of power. Our deliberate yielding to God. Jesus said, For many are called, but few are chosen. Matthew twenty two fourteen. 14. In order for us to walk in the manifestation of what Christ worked for us on the cross and by his resurrection, his authority and power must be evident in our lives. You and I had to receive Christ before we could walk in his authority. When we accepted his shed blood for our behalf, when God gave us a measure of faith to answer the call to salvation, and profess our commitment to Jesus, when we believe and receive the gift of indwelling of the Holy Spirit, all of these aspects were evident that Jesus was calling us to himself so that we could be a blessing to others under his authority and the power of his Holy Spirit, to open their eyes and to turn from their darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, and that they may receive forgiveness of sins and the inheritance among which they are sanctified by faith that is in me. Acts 26 and 18. You have been given everything you need to live out reality of your salvation, to go from faith to faith, Romans 1, 17, and from glory to glory, 2 Corinthians 3, 18, New King James Version. To walk out the calling of God of your life, notice that I didn't say to walk out of your job. Your job is what you are paid for, but your calling is what you are made for. A set of freshly printed business cards with a title, pastor or apostle or evangelist, is not what qualifies you for your ministry. Obedience to God and his word that is what will bear the supernatural fruit in your life. We dishonor God, our creator, when we disobey his way of doing things. And whenever we dishonor our head or authority, we lose influence. This is true not just of our relationship with God, but also relationship with human beings in whom he has placed an authority over us to guide us in our natural and spiritual walks on earth. Remember, in the book of Acts, the believers were able to do great works only because they were connected to their source. Their works were also keeping with the parameters of the gospel they had received and the power of the Holy Spirit working within them. Paul wrote, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. 1 Corinthians 4.20 through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and about to, about unto Ilkram, I have fully preached the gospel. Romans 15, 19. Stay under God's protection. To conclude this chapter on the believer's authority, I want to emphasize again that anything in the, from the spiritual realm needs permission to freely operate on the physical earth. We must continue to stay obedient to God and his protection, to have authority over familiar spirits both to prevent them from infiltrating our lives in the first place and to regain authority over them after we have given them opening. In Numbers 22, 
There is a very interesting story of a black sin and prophet named Balaam, whose prophetic ministry became contaminated with his love of money. People with a prophetic gifting on their lives must be particularly careful not to defile themselves by the love of money. This story is also very detailed an example of how familiar spirits operate. King of Black of Moabed sent messengers, therefore, to Balaam, the son of Beor, to Pethor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is he will come out of Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide an opposite from me. Come now, therefore, I pray, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. Perhaps I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I know that he whom blessed is blessed, and that he whom you curse is cursed. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hands. And they came to Balaam and spoke to him the word of Balak. Numbers 22, 5 through 7. King Balak of Moab was intimidated by the Israelites, and he wanted them destroyed. He knew Balaam was an accurate prophet. He wanted to pay Balaam a handsome sum of money in order to decree a curse over God's people. In the ancient world, curses were verbal pronouncements or impressions that could carry spiritual authority. Such curses would set spiritual forces in motion and that they could cause ill favor, sickness, calamity, destruction, and or even death. It is important to understand that pagan nations such as the Moabites were in agreement with and under the authority of demonic powers. They hated Israel because of the spirits that were controlling them. King Balak did not have a spiritual authority to curse the Israelites himself, so he sought out to hire Balaam to do this dirty work. Of course, if you're familiar with this story, you know that things did not go according to King Balak's plan. Instead of cursing the Israelites, Balaam blessed them. Later said, how shall I curse? when whom God has not cursed? Or how shall I defy whom the Lord has not defied? Numbers 23 and 8. The twist in the story comes two chapters later in Numbers 25. And Israel abode in Shittim, Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom and the daughters of Moab. And they called the people of the sacrifices of their gods, and the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined himself with Baal Peor. The anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. Numbers 25, one through three. Even though King Balak had not been able to curse the Israelites through divination and prection, the Israelites brought a curse upon themselves by violating spiritual laws. Many of the men married Moabite women, thus inviting familiar spirits to defile their people. They, they participate in idolatrous practices. They entered in a covenant with the very people who had been hell-bent on destroying them. By doing so, they opened the door to spiritual consequences and provoked God to judge them. This is what God told Moses to do those involved in worshiping Baal Peor. Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. And then Moses said to the judges of Israel, Slay you every one his men that were joined to Baal Peor. Numbers 4, 25, 4 through, 4, 4 through 5. Wow. This significance of events is a profound revelation about spiritual warfare. The Moabites represent demonic powers. They worship demons disguised as deities. They performed evil rituals and defiled the land by inhabited land they inhabited. Again. Their association with demonic powers is why they are not able, they were always hostile toward Israelites. Note that when the Israelites op, operated under divine protection, their enemies could not successfully curse them. However, when they were went out from the, under the protection, they were susceptible to the curse. The accuser of the brethren does not care how you experience destruction, whether it is by self condemnation, spiritual oppression or judgment as long as he can establish legal accusation in the spiritual realm. The Apostle Paul urged Romans, neither yield you, your members, as instruments of the unrighteous to sin, but yield yourself to God, and that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Know you not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether sin to death or as obedience to righteousness. I speak as... 
I speak after the manner of men because the infirmity of your flesh as for you yielded your servants to uncleanness and to iniquity to iniquity. Even so now yield your members servants to righteousness to holiness. Romans 6, 13, 16, and 19. The one dictionary definition of the verb yield is to give way under force or pressure. The Greek word translated yield is above passage is peristemi. As a literal sense, several of its meanings are to place beside or near, to set at hand, to provide, to place a person or thing at one's disposal, to present or show, and to bring to, bring near. Figuratively, the word can ring to bring into one's fellowship of, or intimacy. In the past, we may have unknowingly or knowingly yielded the influence of familiar spirits. But now that we understand the nature of these wicked spirits and how they seek an invitation to infiltrate our lives, we can stop their oppression by actively yielding to God instead. We can repent to the Lord, commit ourselves to him and obeying his word. Then he'll restore our spiritual authority and power to defeat familiar spirits and expel them from our spiritual jurisdiction. Remember these words of Paul that you may know what is hope of his calling and what the riches of his glory is in his inheritance in the saints and what is exceedingly in greatness of his power in the word who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Ephesians 1, 18 through 19. You want me to keep oh, going? Sir. Okay. Oh. All right, amen. All right, so we almost at the end. I'm gonna go ahead and do this prayer. And then we're going to go ahead and do the questions. All right. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the spiritual authority and the power that you have given me through Christ Jesus. You have granted uh, me the ability to confront, appre appre apprehend, and arrest the demonic powers as long as I abide by the rule of the law in my spiritual life. Familiar spirits and other demonic powers will recognize my authority and they can can be stopped and expelled. Um, I yield myself completely to you as I ask, as I ask you to help me align my life with the spiritual principles of authority. I recognize you as the soul solely source of my authority and power and i ask you to help me as the branch to remain continually connected to you the vine let my recognize uh, and submit to the power of the holy spirit flowing through me so that i can walk in victory in my own life and help build the kingdom of god on earth as it is in heaven bringing healing deliverance and your transforming love to everyone i meet in jesus name amen Amen. All right. So the insights for overcoming. Uh, number one, it said, if we are going to successfully operate in a spiritual authority, we must understand the way authority works. Anybody want to uh, elaborate? True or true? I want to say true because it's like the more we know we're able to combat and we're able to move forward and learn how learn more tactics and be more strategy strategy sorry i'm tired over here but like i think it's like i said it's true so the more we know the more we can grow i totally i totally agree with liz because you know the the enemy wants to keep us ignorant he wants us to be prideful and he wants us um he wants us to be, you know, he wants us to lack knowledge. So if, if, if we, if we know better, we do better. That's it. Amen. That's so true. Well, number two, we have been given authority by Jesus Christ to confront, apprehend, and arrest demonic powers. When we abide by the rule of the law in our spiritual lives, familiar spirits and other demonic powers recognize our authority. Come on, relate, talk to me. Yes, yes, that, that, that is so good. We have been given authority by Jesus Christ to confront, apprehend, apprehend and arrest demonic powers. When we are abiding by the 
by the rule of the law in our spiritual lives, familiar spirits and other demonic powers recognize our authority. That is so true because, because if we are, as, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if we want to be like Jesus and sound like Jesus and walk like Jesus and talk like Jesus, the enemy cannot, he, and, and just, you know, just like the, just like the enemy said, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know. So if he knows the word, he knows authority. Amen. Good. So true. So true. Amen. Amen. Number three, because of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we have supernatural cap cap capabilities and the conviction of Christ in you. Colossians 1 27 talks about that and to operate in power and authority. Go ahead, Liz. Okay. I think just by like for me, I think like the more we walk, the like when we have the Holy Spirit in our lives, we can move forward and that he gives us power and authority to operate that and that we shouldn't be afraid that we can do that and that we can do all things through Christ who strengthened us and that we can do these. We do have super, supernatural capabilities and that we shouldn't have to worry. Yes, yes, yes. because uh, just like in the video, when when brother Hagen, I like how he said, you know, greater is he that is in me than he who is of this world. And that is so true because we don't come in our authority. We come in Jesus's authority. So that's good, Liz. That's good. I agree. I agree. That's good. Well, number four, in order to exercise authority over demonic powers, we must understand and align our lives with those four key spiritual principles. And we need to apply this, ladies. Number one, all authority and power have a source. Amen. All authority and power have a source. Come on. When you are disconnected to the source, which is our heavenly father, come on. Then you, 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 you it's just like, a battery in your car and it's not connected to the positive and the negative okay it's just the battery just sitting there and the actual positive and negative is on the sides laying there on the side so okay it got you got to be connected to the source amen number two authority and power are received and transferred amen authority and power or received and transferred amen that's that's just a good father i'm just saying it, it, he transferred everything that we need we shouldn't be lacking nothing amen long as you you spending time with him building that relationship with him having that one-on-one -on -one intimate time okay everything is still is transferring it's transferring into you as well amen um Number three, authority and powers are jurisdictional. Or number four, authority and power have a cause. Amen. Authority and power have a cause. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's ask the questions. I'm going to go ahead and try to uh, go to the questions and you guys can tell me if you can uh, relate to this. It said, I am operating in the spiritual authority Christ has provided for me. Why and why not? I'm going to repeat. I am operating in the spiritual authority Christ has provided for me. Why and why not? You, why not you, you're not operating in it. Come on, talk to me. I can definitely relate to this because um, earlier in the chapter when it was talking about you know, having head knowledge and, you know, going to church, going to a building and warming the seat and, and having a having head knowledge is different from actually being a doer. And I can definitely relate to this because I had so much knowledge of Jesus, just like the Pharisees, that I didn't even, if I were to see him, I probably wouldn't even know him because I didn't know him intimately. So, 
So having, so having to know him and knowing about him is two different things, whether or not you operate in the authority he has given you. To know about him is like the Pharisees. Yeah, we know he's coming. But when, when he shows up, it's like, are you he? Are you the one? But if you know him, you know Jesus because of the way he talks, the way he walks, the way he loves, his compassion. And, and you just know, you just know that's him. So I can definitely relate to that. When I got my deliverance, when the veil was removed from my eyes and the scales fell, I can definitely understand why Jesus operated in deliverance, a New Testament reality. That's good, friend. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Do you have anything to elaborate on that, Liz? Um, yeah. uh, the question? Yeah. Okay, man. Go ahead. I think, like, um, just realizing I do have power and not, I know that God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and, and sound mind. Like, okay, I don't have to be fearful. And that just keep realizing I have authority and, like, I should. It, like just let things go and not like okay just let it and not let things get to things i'm, I'm sorry i'm over tired and that we do have and that once you like what fran said once those scales are removed it's like i can see in that and have that intimate relationship so i can walk in spiritual authority and so i just i don't want to be a, just a hearer i want to be just a doer and a hearer that's all i got Okay, amen. I like that. Um, when you operate in, in, in the spiritual authority that Christ has provided for us, I mean, you 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 confident, and I, I'm not sounding cocky or anything, but I mean, you, you especially when you spending time with them and you seeing, like she said, on ongoing on hands uh, training, you know, one on one, and however. It's like, you know, your confidential level goes uh, to another area, to, you know, a level where, you know, you, you know, you in tune with the Lord, you, 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 re you even having a um, fasting and a repentant lifestyle as well, because, you know, we, we, what they said without uh, gifts and callings is without repentance. So, I mean, I, I just personally, I think that just like we have to, uh, die to our flesh on a daily basis. We have to renew our minds on a daily basis. I think we also need to also, you know, repent, you know, every day, you know, because it's something that you said or done, it could have been unconsciously and something that did please God, had displeased God. So I believe that, you know, that that plays a part too, you know, walking in the uh, authority uh, that God is calling you to do. And you, can, and you have seen, the actual signs and wonders and miracles as well, you know, uh, when you're obedient and walking in his will, amen? Um, number two, which of the four principles of the spiritual authority do I especially need to move into alignment with at all time in my life? Come on, talk to me. Do I need to my, name? For me, it was authority and powers are jurisdictional. When I, when I found out about that, oh my goodness, I was like, you mean I have power and authority over the territory that God has given us and that there are angels that, that measure territory. There are angels that measure what was taken illegally, stripped and stolen and what was taken out from underneath us when, when the enemy used to, you know, ambush you and and push you around and just leave you for dead because that was my life and like like apostle said you you gain confidence you gain like you like um like the scripture says god puts you on the firm foundation where your foot doesn't slip or or um or uh, or you don't you don't fall. You're, you're stable. You stand there knowing that you know that you know that you know. And when you don't, when people don't have that confidence, 
you know, they go into other things like people pleasing, they have shame, they have condemnation. So it's like, they're not at their full capacity to love and forgive and, and to lead them to Jesus. So if, if they have that hindrance in their life and people say, yeah, I know that, that, that stuff never works. It's like, who says who, who, who said, who told you that? Who told you that? So I can definitely relate to that. And I know um, that I know that when, when I started studying about jurisdiction and the angels, you know, um, uh, measuring territory, <laughs> I was so excited. I was like, I want it all back. I want it all back. I want my joy. I want my love. I want my peace. I want what the enemy took from me illegally. I want it all back in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Somebody don't ruffle her feathers. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Don't get me started, Apostle. <laughs> Jesus. Amen. I totally agree with him. You know, I I, I mean, you just got to know that you got to take a stand, you know, and, and know that's what's in you, you know, um, greater, greater. And, and, and know that you, you can do all things. Like she said earlier, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So you got to know that you know that you know when you spend time with god and and you feel that you know you 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 feel his presence you feel his love i mean I, one person said i'll be feeling goosebumps i'll be getting all teary eyes when i know the presence of the lord of the glory is just sitting on me resting on me you know amen so i i i, I love that that was good uh number three uh liz did you have anything to uh add to that sweetie um, yeah, I think like for me, like struggling with the jurisdictions and tonight's lesson put it in perspective for me, like how the police officer has jurisdictions, we have jurisdiction as well. And then we have backup. We have heavenly armies backing us up. We have prayer people praying for us. We have our accountabilities like come helping us. Come on, Liz. Yes, and, come on. And that when we take authority and stand firm in our faith and stand firm, we can fight, we can battle because we're already equipped and we cannot be afraid and we can't cower down that we have to take dominion over these principalities and dominions over wherever a jurisdiction that God placed us it may not be like why are we placed here but God knows that we're equipped to fight whatever we what's going on that he gave us because like I said he gave us like angel armies he gave us like especially for you Apostle McCord to instruct us on how to fight these and how to stand firm and to stand firm and confidence comes it's like those small battles bring confidence and brings more confidence and that's all i got good that's good that was good that was good that was good amen all right last for number number three it says if i moved out from under god authority what steps can I take to yield to him and be restored to my spiritual inheritance? Come on, y'all. Repent. Repent. And if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord over every aspect of, of your life and you repent and, 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 you know, and the, the scripture, um, submit submit to the submit to the lord and the devil will flee i was meditating on that the other day and holy spirit had said to me submit every aspect of of your life and this whole thing just puts it into perspective for me the authority like like your finances especially the prayer if you submit you know your finances to the lord you submit your 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 um your marriage to the Lord, you submit your children to the Lord, you submit your career, you know, your will, everything, you submit it to him, you submit everything to him, and resist the devil by submitting, saying, here, Lord, this is all yours, 
you know, everything you, you made everything and everything on earth is yours. I am yours. Everything is yours. It's yours. And, and when the devil comes, he, he, you resist him. He can't take it anyway, because it, it doesn't belong. It belongs to the Lord. And he cannot touch it. He cannot touch your finances. He cannot touch your home. He cannot touch your finances. What you submit to the Lord, he cannot touch. And even he knows that. And he has not, he can do nothing but flee. And, and, and that brought a whole new perspective for me, especially when it comes to, you know, lifting up your shield. When you, because the shield, covers your whole body and your whole body means everything about you everything that is in your world from the time you from the time you get up and and you and you and you submit um you seek first the kingdom to the time you go to bed and you and you fall asleep in the savior's arms you submit everything to him and the shield covers everything about you and when i when i started meditating on that it just this this whole chapter just brings it into perspective the authority the submission the obedience of of what god gave us to be good stewards over and if we're not being good stewards then we repent and say father teach me show me uh, where I'm lacking revelation, where I'm lacking knowledge, where I'm ignorant, so the enemy does not use that against me. And and this this book is so good. It is so good. And and I just pray that everybody, you know, that that God's light will shine on every aspect of of what this book is teaching and the authority and the principles. And especially when you go through deliverance, when you go through the through deliverance, it's like those clogged pipes, those pipes that are backed up, those pipes that are clogged, will all of a sudden just, just the hindrance will be removed, and Holy Spirit will be given free reign to, to flow through you, and to, to just, to just cleanse you from, and God, uh, God's anointing, and his blood, and his word, will just cleanse you and when you feel God's presence and his love and you bask in it you get understanding you get revelation and that's when it's easy to stand in your authority and your and what God everything that Jesus died for it's easy for you to step into it because you know who goes before you you know who you serve in Jesus name Amen. Amen. That's good. All right. Do you have anything to add to that, Lynn? Yeah, I think it's like when Fred was speaking, I was reminded of like when when Nathan brought came to David when he with the whole sheep thing and how like God sends people into our lives like, hey, you might want to fix or get back to where you're supposed to be, like regroup, reset, repent, and to come back and have okay. And just repent and just be cleansed and like and then psalm 51 came to my spirit was like okay just create me a clean heart oh god and just repent and just come back and then confess and believe and just come back and he'll restore us a right salvation and that's all i got good that's good i mean when she used david as an example you know creating me a clean heart you know you know, we already knew that David had some issues, but he was also uh, a man after God's own heart. You know, he, 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 uh, I almost said he, he, he knew professionally he, he, he was a repentance professional. He, 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 he was a professional repentance. Okay. So that, that, that was, that was, um, uh, definitely good. Um, when, you know, and I know a lot of times when we move out of God's will, and like it said, it said, and we get out of God's authority, you'll feel it. It you'll feel it. It's it's like it's almost like a whole different shift in you. You know what I'm saying? You don't. You ain't praying like you used to. You ain't fasting. You ain't in your word. You ain't got that 
that hunger after his righteousness. You don't have that zeal, that fire. You know what I'm saying? You can tell. You can tell because it's now you become lukewarm. Uh huh. Now you become spiritually dead, disconnected from the source. You will know it. You will know it. You can't fake it. You know what I'm saying? You got some people will kind of fake it, you know, and play, you know, like uh, holy than thou, but then go, home, you know, in church, play holy than thou, and then go home acting like the world, acting like a heathen. So, yes, you, you, you know, and the, and the one thing about the Holy Spirit, it's going to convict you. It's going to convict you. It's going to correct you. It's going to send somebody in, in, in your path, I guarantee, to tell you walking in error. You walking in like the hypocrites. You you know what I'm saying? You not me by hypocrites, meaning that if you out there with your friends, drinking, smoking, cussing, acting a fool, and then on the other hand, you 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 uh, confessing or professing to be a Christian, it's gonna be hard for the non-believers to believe you. It's gonna be hard for the non-believers to come to Christ because they looking at you like you just like the world. You just like, you know, you compromising. We were just talking about that. You're compromising and you are, are rebellion, you know, and that's a, 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 a red flag immediately that, that can show you that you're being uh, out of God's authority that god is moved away from you oh and and i i think of this good thank you Jose. king saul was a prime example okay he was you know getting word from uh what was the samuel at that time yes samuel the prophet samuel was giving the word from god what to do instructions and everything and then king saul did what he wanted to do you know he allowed his flesh to get in the way and rebellion set up in his heart you know and so now you know you you know that when you when you's like wait a minute lord i'm not you know having good dreams anymore i'm having horrible uh demonic activities coming in this in my dreams there's a there's a red flag there's a door opening a porter opening of the you know because of what rebellion or sin that we have uh engaged in so what steps that I can do to yield back to him and restore and be restored by uh restore back to my father, my spiritual inheritance is first of all, be humble. Second of all, recognize I'm I have found I have fallen short of his glory. Admit to it, you know, and just say, I need to get this right. I'm tired of waiting uh uh waving in my face i'm tired of uh strag straggling the fence you know i'm tired you know when you you know it in your in, within yourself that you tired you know uh in your walk is not being productive and god is not using you and you see all your other sisters in christ moving forward and god is using them and and everything and you are at a standstill so you can't hate on them you can't get jealous of them because god is using them because you choose another avenue and allowing the adversary to get in your ear to keep you know constantly uh, deceiving you and allowing you to fall in that pit you know so i i just say you have to make a conscious decision even when i tell you know you have to make a conscious decision I'm in this to win. I'm in this to serve you, God, to the rest of my days, okay? God, use me. I am yielding my vessel. I'm yielding this broken vessel to you, to the Holy Spirit. And I just, I say that in love, guys. That That's just one of the things that I, anybody else? Oh, I think they are, they already elaborated. Amen. All right, y'all got to add to that? Amen. If not, that's a tough love <laughs> that's tough love you know and and sometimes sometimes it's it's what you know people need to hear sometimes because because it's not being taught it's not it's not being you know um centralized 
in, in our lives. And I know for a fact, because, you know, the, the, the place where I went to church, um, they used to tell me, don't bother the devil. If you leave him alone, he'll leave you alone. And <laughs> that was the biggest lie I ever believed. And, you know, for that same reason, he used to beat me up in the alley and leave me for dead for years and years. So that's tough love. That is tough love. And I, I just, I wish somebody would have, would have, you know, uh, yanked me with love <laughs> and, and, in a, in a good way, because I was stubborn and I was rebellious because I had a lot of head knowledge. I had a, I had a lot of head knowledge and, you know, and the enemy used that to puff me up. And there are times when, you know, people, maybe they did, maybe they did try to tell me, hey, sis, this is, this is what I see. But, but, you know, I was argumentative with them because I had so much head knowledge and no relationship. I was like a Pharisee, a Pharisee, you know, sees, sees Jesus and, and they can't even, um, they can't, they won't even recognize him. They know about him but they won't recognize him because they have no relationship with him. So it's tough love. Sometimes people need tough love, you know, and, 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 and we, we got to hear it sometimes. So, amen. Amen. Thank you, apostle. Amen. I like when she, you know, said that tough love, you know, um, one thing my team can honestly say that if I see something out of order, or I see, you know, them walking in error, I, I, I can allow that blood to be on my hand. I really, I can't afford to. I like to sleep good at night. I like to sleep with a, a good conscience. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I just, I, I tell them when God release it to me and I call them or I text them, I say, hey, you know, I see, I see, you know, whatever the Lord showed me, I see what's going on. And and I'm I I do it in love. I I honestly I'm working on it. Um, but uh, for the most part, I I think I I I try to you know do it in love. You know, it's just like if you were in the military, Amen. In the military, and um, your, your lieutenant or whoever's in charge, you know, you, I, I I know for a fact if you guys begin to lack. And and the other and the and the rest of the uh, mates have to suffer by doing fifty extra sit ups. Got to get up extra an hour early in the morning to work out. You know what I'm saying? Because you're lacking. Because you're lazy. You know what I'm saying? Because you're not taking the extra extra steps to you know push yourself. You know what I'm saying? And so I don't know where I come with that. Holy Spirit. Well, basically, it's the same thing. You know. So. As as a leader, you know, if you if I if I still see that you you you're gravitating to milk, you still want to stay on milk, and you've been with with the ministry for three years, I'm gonna say, look, I, I keep I I will keep uh pulling on your gift. I keep uh uh training you to get grooming you, utilizing your gift, and, and you gotta. That's where you have to step out the pe the boat, Peter. And, and step on faith and step on faith on God's faith and know that you know God got you he got you he ain't gonna guarantee he ain't gonna put you in a fight and don't give you the right ammunition come on he ain't gonna put you in a battle and not have you equipped come on so hey amen I don't know I just had to go there all right uh I want to get on into this prayer. I got 15 minutes before a class in and I'm trying to keep them because, uh, I mean, I keep the time frame and everything because I know we got to go. But also want to let you know if you want to sow the seed, we appreciate every love, love offering, love seed that you are sowing. is blessing the ministry. is helping us to grow. It's helping us to reach the nations. Amen as well. And you can just go over, over to um, our cash app. It's called dollar sign healing m2 at uh, he, uh dollar sign healing m2 amen so let me go ahead and pray this prayer out with you just, um it's not a really a prayer i i, I want to call it more of a commanding prayer 
you know, and then I'm going to end on that. Thank you, uh, Liz, for sharing that uh, cash out with the uh, people. Hallelujah. As you guys guess, I just want you, um, I always call it a breeding procedure for all our mothers and head kids. We know the breathing technique is like inhaling, exhaling. Okay, so exhale, exhaling is, or expelling the unclean spirits by blowing out inhaling the holy spirit back into those places to those in that in that temple in the places where once the uh unclean spirit had reside so we we want to inhale the holy spirit to fill those spaces back up amen as i pray this prayer over you um i pray that you get a rest of your breakthrough you get your freedom amen i pray the chains are being broken i pray that god's fingers begin to point uh point in every area of you that that is dormant everything that's being stagnant every everything that's being darkened uh and and within you so we command of of heavens of of armies right now we come to you today and we put before you all the monitor spirits and familiar spirits that are watching our process and and progress and uh and coming against the pro the purpose and plans that you have for our life we ask that you would scatter every evil gathering that there are that that are made against us in my in jesus name and we disrupt the camp and then we send confusion within their communication we disrupt their meeting and we destroy the foundation of the meeting place we fashion your weapons of divert and diversation to the destroy them in the mighty name of jesus absolutely no weapons that are formed against us shall prosper and any time that rise up against us in judgment you will could be condemned keep and guard us oh god and and your and allow us to be the apple of your eyes and hide us oh god under the shadow of the wings oh god and cover us oh god with the glory and glory cloud of the smoke uh, uh smoke by day and the shining of the fl of flaming fire by night be a can uh, canopy canopy over us oh god and i ask that you defense uh defense of, of divine love and protection oh god around our families around us in the mighty name of jesus we ask you god to put a hedge around us oh god our family our finance our job our ministry our careers our children and our homes oh god and uh, and our marriages oh god and that uh, that we will have all and uh, have all that we need on every side in the name of jesus i can I ask right now that you begin to allow us to prosper and, and, and happiness upon us, oh God, and the works of our hands and our possessions will increase for your glory. Keep your words of the Bible ever before us so that we may be wiser than the enemy. Bring us to mind the scriptures that it needs to speak into the atmosphere to scatter them and destroy them by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. We tear up by uh, the roots of, uh, in the spirit of anything that has been planted in our house or in our home or in our surrounding area of our bodies that may not uh put there by you and was planted by to destroy uh our hopes and our future oh god we ask you right now father to bring our mind and objects that are around us that will cause these monitor and familiar spirits to congregate against us in the mighty name of jesus we cover oh god under your blood of jesus oh god our life our future our destiny our family our jobs our career our marriage our health our children and our homes and our finances oh god and the ministry that you have given us oh god so that the enemy will not be able to come against us anything uh, anything that belongs to uh to to us surely your goodness and your mercy and your unfailing love shall follow us oh god all the days of our life and through the length of uh, the days of the house of the lord and his presence and god we shall be uh we shall dwell in the place oh god in the mighty name of jesus lord may these monitor spirits and familiar spirits lose our address lose our address may they never find us again in the mighty name of jesus amen hallelujah glory amen i'm mute hallelujah Mm, Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, hallelujah. Father God, we thank you. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. And amen. Lord, we thank you. We love you. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. Well, if you felt anything, manifestation, release it in Jesus' name. Know that we send it to dry places or send it wherever Jesus may send it. And know that we pray that it never, ever return to this house, this temple again in Jesus' name. Amen. So I pray that God's uh, hand, uh, uh, head of protection around you. I pray even now that his love will in will encamp around you. I tell you, we need to lay our head in his bosom and allow him to sleep, to sleep in him and sleep in his presence. Amen. Have that rest, have that peace. Everything that you need, amen, is, is in him. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. I thank you, class. You guys did an awesome job. Dialogue. Y'all just did it. Y'all did your homework. I'm so proud of you guys. All right. Well, it's that time. It's time for me to lay it down. So we'll see you guys next week. Tuesday is our podcast. And next Thursday, we'll see you back in class. But come Monday through Friday, come for prayer. Come on, y'all. We need to pray. Matter of fact, next week, we starting our fast. Uh, so once we get our memo uh, uh, complete, we'll send that out and give you guys heads up that we are going to, we, we come in as a corporate uh, 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 prayer and we are uh, fasting as well. So, so we can pray that God would move mightily in our nation, in our community, and in our family. Amen. God bless you guys. Love you. Have a blessed weekend until we meet again. Love you. Good night. Bye, Franny May. Good night. Bye. I stopped. Amen. Bye, baby.